Hey, so this is going to be a quick demo on how to install Ubuntu Server 12 inside of an Oracle VirtualBox virtual machine. Uh, so to begin, uh, we're going to open up VirtualBox, click on New to create a new virtual machine, click on Continue, type in a new, a new name for your uh, virtual machine. And I'm going to be setting up a LAMP stack, but you can uh, configure your server differently if you choose. I choose to give it uh, one gig of RAM. And then you need to create a new hard disk for it. Um, I use VMDK files uh, so that we can use them cross compatibly with uh, VMware Fusion but you can choose any of these options if you'd like. Uh, also I choose to have it dynamically allocated so that it grows as needed. And then we're just going to save this in the default folder, give it 8 gigs should be plenty, and hit continue. And then create. And it'll review your settings and hit create. All right, so now um, one thing I want you to notice is that under here under network, there's currently one adapter and it's connected via uh, net. Now, a lot of people have issues when they uh, power up a VM because they only want it to be accessible, accessible internally where they want to access it from their host machine, in this case, um, my Mac. But they also want the VM to have access to the internet so that it can download packages and install software and that kind of thing. So what I'm going to do here real quickly is I'm going to click on network and I'm going to change our first adapter to host only and under name select VBox Net Zero. Uh, if that doesn't appear for you, you need to create an internal network first and you can do that in the virtual machine preference or virtual box, pre virtual box preferences uh, up at the top. So then I'm also going to enable a second adapter, and that one we're going to use as NAT. So unlike VMware Fusion, um, VirtualBox requires two separate adapters, one for each of these purposes. So once that's added, um, then we can go ahead and start up our machine. So now on the first boot, you can click Continue, and it's going to ask you for the source of your installation media. So here I'm going to choose a Ubuntu 12 server ISO that I downloaded. You can get that from the Ubuntu website. And then I'm going to hit continue. And then I'm going to hit start. And walk through the options here. You hit install Ubuntu server. And select English, United States. Um, don't let it detect your keyboard layout or it'll take forever. All right, now I'm going to pause the recording here as this goes through its boot up process and um, I'll restart the recording as uh, different options come up as needed. Okay, back it asked us what our primary network interface is going to be. So we are going to choose the interface that is accessible to the internet, which is our ETH1 which was via NAT, as you can see here. And I'm going to pause this again. Okay, and we're back again. It's asking us for our host name. Uh, you can just leave it as Ubuntu, or you can set a custom host name as needed. Um, finally, for the full name of the new user, you can add your own name here. And you can select a user account. And then finally, choose password and confirm it. Confirm the time zone. And we're going to pause again because there's a bunch. Actually, no. All right, it's going to ask you um, for your partitioning method. So uh, you can just leave the default options here unless you're trying to install uh, multiple machines on the same virtual disk, which is a different topic for a different time. So write your changes and continue. All 
All right, and once again, I'm going to pause so that this recording doesn't become ridiculously long. Okay, and we're back. Um, it's finished installing, and it's going to ask us a few more questions here. So, uh, if you don't have a proxy set up between you and the internet, or don't know what that is, just click continue. I'm going to pause this while it downloads these things. Okay, resuming here. Um, you can choose to install security updates automatically. Alright, and then it's going to prompt you for pre-configured software installation. Um, for myself, I'm going to be enabling the OpenSSH server and the LAMP server. However, you can customize this for your liking. And it's going to download a bunch of files and install them, hopefully. All right, uh, depending on what you chose uh, for your particular setup, it may prompt you with uh, various password requests. Um, so here I'm creating a new password for the MySQL user. Okay, so once your software finishes installing, it's going to prompt you for whether or not you'd like to install the Grub bootloader on the hard disk. So uh, you can go ahead and hit yes here if this is the only operating system on your disk. And that will proceed to install. So I'm going to pause this again. Okay, so now the installation is complete. Uh, so you can hit continue. And this will reboot. and you'll be prompted with the login for your server. You can do an IF config once you're logged in to ensure that your Ethernet device is enabled. And you will also need to add the second device. Um, so if you do VI, you can see network slash interfaces You'll be able to add a second interface on here for the uh, NAT adapter, which will allow you to connect to both the outside internet and also the internal network that you created earlier. Um, also, you have to do this using sudo. So all you need to do here is enter insert mode and do auto eth0 iface eth0 inet dhcp if you're um, actually you don't need to worry about that just type in DHCP and then save your changes by hitting escape then colon and then X and then when you reboot you will be able to access your server uh, you can type in ifconfig once the reboot is over you'll see two devices there eth0 and eth1 and the eth0 interface will have an internal IP address that you can access from your host and the uh, eth1 interface will have the address that VirtualBox gives to it via net. So that is everything that you need to know uh, for starting up a web server um, using vir VirtualBox to install a Ubuntu server. So thanks for watching and be sure to leave a comment if you have any questions.